What's up, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what to say. I really uh, don't. All right, welcome Hi, to everybody. welcome to the Black Top Pulpit <laughs> by the Church of Sunsites. I am Andrew, the pastor of the church at Sunsites, and I am here with two of our church members, uh, P. A. and Ken. Uh, yeah, welcome. What's up? Uh, What's going morning, on? Morning, Ken. Yeah, Ken. Ken was sending us pictures of his pour over coffee that he's making he roasts his own beans and it ain't right i'm a little mm. jelly about that it ain't right <laughs> it's not right man it's one of, not... one of the only ways to do it that's for sure <laughs> that's, that's so easy <laughs> just, too it, it's just wrong no i mean when we're sitting here drinking folgers drip and you're doing something oh. like that man <laughs> look at him <laughs> Man, you, you got to look out for us. I think that's the unforgivable sin, man. Folgers <laughs> coffee? No, that, that stuff's fertilizer. <laughs> hey, Fol- Folgers and Maxwell House used to be like oh. the cultural to-do, all right? It's a- <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's that's- been a few cultural to-dos that are no-nos too. <laughs> I, yeah. I agree. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody in the Army, that's all we had was Maxwell House. Now, you think when Army guys get some time off, they go straight to the bar? Wrong. <laughs> we go straight to the coffee shop and get real coffee. That's what we did. Yeah. Seriously. Absolutely. Oof, it's so easy it. too, man. I think if people if people tried it a couple of times, not, not even a couple, just once, you, you roast your coffee, grind it, do a quick pour over, takes about three minutes and Man, you got a good cup of coffee. It tastes like just grew out of the ground. Yeah, give me a good single source any day. Mm. <laughs> All right, Ken, I I have a I have a complaint about you. Oh, nice, good I way to start. Too. I'm on <laughs> yeah. his backside. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a good start. Uh, I, I definitely have a complaint about you. Uh, let me hit the share button here so all of our viewers can see. Oh, if I can, if this? if I can even see, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. All right. So I found this. <laughs> oh, dang! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I read this first article here, which uh, you need something more recent than 2019, bro. I yeah, know, man. I know. Yeah, man. Come on, dude. <laughs> And this picture is awesome too. Look at this. this I know. Great. Where was that Niagara from? Falls. Yep. Nice. Really? That's awesome. There. It's fantastic. But yeah, that. Yep. I remember that one. That's. I got some heat for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, this is a cool site, man. Uh, yeah. I, I look forward to reading more of this stuff. But yeah, we found it when when Katie was looking for Kathy's email address, and it said uh, at kenduffy.net. So <laughs> I, I look forward to looking through this, man. Why didn't you tell me you had a website? Is yeah. There- <laughs> because I'm just not really good at keeping up on it. Like I, I love man, it. We it, know. Right. <laughs> but I do it I, so slowly, man. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. You could see, I mean, 2019, I think that was my last post. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I subscribed. So I look forward to whatever you post next. <laughs> oh, cool. Good deal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, is that the it's complaint not- that I didn't tell you? <laughs> yeah, and that in the coffee. We're still mad about the coffee. Oh, nice. Oh, always, always mad about the coffee. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's that little green light right there? Is that, that camera? Yeah, that means my camera's on. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. It means they're watching you, PA. Yeah, and I say. Were you the guy that knocked on my door at three in the morning and ran? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's let. Yeah, Let's we jump really into some, did some substantial conversation here. <laughs> um, what what stood out to you guys from the sermon on Sunday? Any uh, any questions, comments, and or wow complaints? All right, let me look. Yeah, I was gonna say that I, I didn't get a chance. I did jot down quite a few things this go around. Um, hmm. Can we read the passage? That'll that'll reignite my mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we can read the passage. Uh, it was, there, I'll read it for us. First Corinthians three ten through fifteen. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it, for no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, 
Each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it, because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Yeah, do you know, before, I, th- I think I'd naturally get into your sermon, um, but first I want to kind of kind of maybe make a, a quick reflection when I, when I was thinking through this and when you were preaching this on Sunday, um, I think a lot of us know this passage, but a lot of us read this and like, yeah. it's like, well, you would imagine just about every church would say, yeah, I lay a, a good foundation, but it's like the question enters our mind. What, what exactly does this look like? Like in every yeah. everyday reality, not just a, not just a claim like says, yay, Jesus, because that's what, that's what most people w- that, that uh, profess Christ would, would claim. But th- there's a, there's a foundation that can be built. That's not what Paul is talking about here, even though you can do it in the name of Jesus. So that didn't really answer any questions but i'm more proposing like a thought and a thought that i had (laughs) yeah and the the whole point was um the only proper material to lay any foundation is the gospel not wood hay straw bricks or anything else right right the only proper material to lay a foundation is the gospel and the only proper material uh, with which we build upon that foundation is the gospel and the gospel here being defined is Christ and Christ crucified, the person and work of Jesus Christ, right? You know, I, I can't, I, I read this and I, and of course I might've read it once before. I don't remember. Um, but it's like, I, I remember one very wise gentleman telling me, and it's all foundational. That's where I'm going with this is about foundation is that he said, you know, when you want to start something, look for what God's doing and join in. And you know what? I, I can't help but think of that. And then he was very wise in that tone. He just said, you know, your discernment's got to be off the charts. Got to make sure you know where you're going, what you're doing. He says, but just see where God is busy and go help. Yeah. And, and I kind of look at this as the foundation being laid by other people. Maybe I'm looking at this wrong, but I see the foundation of other people or, or the, you know, them doing something good for God and you know they love God. So. That, that's a good way to start too. So just like what we're doing in Wilcox. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Let me, let me ask if um, I quoted, quoted you right. Cause this is the first thing I wrote down on, on Sunday is God's, <laughs> God's grace builds the church. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, that sounds like an accurate representation of my thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be amazed and, how many times people are like, I can't believe you said this, this, and this. And it's like, I, no, I didn't. That's- <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually why you record your sermons, right? <laughs> uh, that is a benefit because then if somebody misquotes me, I can say, all you have to do is go listen to the sermon. Right. And be sure that I never actually said that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I love that every time, um, especially the past few weeks. No, actually, since the beginning of this podcast, we've been talking about humility and like God's sovereignty and, and, and how little or nothing we know without him, nothing that we do without him. And the the first opening truth in here is according to the grace of God. You know, it's like, here's Paul who we would even like esteem as like, man, like what an amazing guy. And he was, but like he was nothing without Jesus and is nothing without Jesus and all the work that he accomplishes and every, all the work that accomplished from that time to today was based off of God and his grace and his choosing to use us for something that's stinking awesome, which is yeah. to proclaim the gospel and make disciples. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I often hear people, um, this is one of the uh, really off base accusations against Calvinists of our day. Well, if God's doing all the work, then are you saying that 
that you don't have to do anything and you don't have uh, to, you don't have to share yeah, the gospel right, and, right. and you don't have to go plant churches because the, because the work is monergistic. So you don't have to do anything. And that is not what we see in this passage. Uh, Paul begins by saying only by the grace of God. And right. then he follows That's that up beautiful. by, then he follows it up by saying, I laid a foundation so I can, mm. I can work hard. I can have a great Christian biblical work ethic. I can work hard. I can be proud of the work that I do understanding that it's God who brings the growth. Um, I, I can still, I can still like be like, Oh, let's work hard to do this thing in Wilcox. Let's right. Let's save the spring. Let's right. open it back up. Let's start doing youth and family ministry in Wilcox. Let's, let's use that as the, the hub for our, our missions work around the world. Um, let's, let's raise this money. I can feel great about the work that I am doing. I can feel great about the work that I do as a pastor here, knowing full well that even though I'm participating very actively and I, I am actually building, I do actually right, have a right. hammer and nails in my hand yeah. that God is the only one who brings the growth. So it will only bear any fruit if, if God is, is doing it through me, which, which is an amazing realization. And that's what Calvinism really is, right? Only, only by God's yeah. grace can we do anything. And I would also answer to that person um, quickly, just to give them a, I mean, you're right. I don't have to do anything. And if, if I didn't, God would still accomplish the exact same thing that he planned, you know, from before the, the foundation of the earth. He, he doesn't depend on me. Um, I wouldn't want to do nothing, but he doesn't need me to do anything. And if I didn't, the gospel work gets done this without me. Um, but we take joy in, in getting to be co-workers with him co-laborers in the gospel that's that's just a privilege that um has no comparison to anything else in life it's it's like you, yeah, there, you're at the bit you yeah say i'm chomping in bitter i'll forget about it in two seconds it's like you know what if if you look at it god being his sovereign he, he, he's the mac daddy of everything uh, we really don't have to do anything but we want to there's just, just difference you just equate god the father with daddy? Al Capone? <laughs> yeah, I like Al Capone. <laughs> Al Capone was a nice guy. My the, grandmother the, was a nurse. The, the, mob, the mob boss is a... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. I spent a, I forgot to tell you, Duffy. I spent a lot of time in Rockford, Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I didn't like I, it. it I worked up there quite a bit. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's like there's we're looking at so many people rephrase that question. Well, if we don't have to do anything. No, it's the desire I want to do. I get everything. to. I get to. Dude, I Instead get to. of I don't yeah. have to, I get to. Amen to that. It's like I don't have to come do this. Yeah. This what did we call this thing again? Podcast. Yeah. So it's like I, I don't have to do a podcast, but I get to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just wish it was shorter because I really want a cigar. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, that's well, it. Your, we, your breakfast one wasn't enough, PA. I didn't have one today, Ken. I woke up too late, brother. I did. I didn't have one. So I, I had a nice breakfast this morning. Did you really? Yeah, two fried eggs and a couple sausage links. Mm, perfect. I gotta go. <laughs> oh, so I had a question for you, Andrew, or or PA, if you uh, haven't said on this too. Um, one of one of my uh, questions, and I would need to kind of reread the greater context here, but was in Paul's mind um, that they weren't building on the foundation that is Christ. Is that? Uh, yeah. Well, what? yeah, you what? don't, you don't write something like this unless somebody is not doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, and Paul even said earlier, this is chapter one material, right? Or chapter two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, some of you are, are, of Paul and some of you are right, of, you're of, of Apollos. Apollo. Yeah. What foundation are you building on? Uh, yeah. You're not to be about my philosophies or those of Apollos. I planted, Apollos watered. God gave the growth. It's, it's about God. It's The foundation is Christ and his work, not Paul and his work and not Apollos and his work. It's Christ and his work. Yeah, I, I think that's where Paul's going. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that kind of I do. circles me back to that, that first um, kind of question. And I'm wondering if we can unpack that a little bit. So if, if, if they have the gospel and obviously, I mean, Paul was one of their, was their, their pastor and one of their teachers. And, and, um, and now they have other teachers in the church. Like if you can divide um, 
over things that we we would say clearly well yeah that's that's wrong it's sinful like you're dividing the church you're causing controversies and all kinds of things but but he equates this to like the foundation so when when apollos teaches like like it's gospel so why why is adding in the divisions or the sex why is that altering the foundation that is laid and built upon that's kind of that's kind of where my mind goes and i was kind of getting at when when i was thinking when we started this passage is why is why is he talking about this cuz the the gospel's not void it's not it's not not present in the corinthian church but he's saying that essentially they're building upon a different foundation so that's that's kind of where my mind is wrestling through yeah or they're trying to build upon the foundation he laid which is the gospel of Jesus Christ using materials other than the gospel, which isn't going to work. Right. And I think that's where the tension is. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. What you got, man? Throw, throw I think something. my brain's broken. <laughs> I really do. I think my brain's broken because it's like, I, I, I don't, it, when I see this and I read all of this, I can kind of hear, not a warning, but like a, just a statement of saying, don't base it on your foundation, dude. Because right. so many people base their belief system, everything, their ministry on what they feel. Or and you can't feel. do that. Yeah, It don't work. I tried that. <laughs> yeah. but, and but it's like your foundation's got to be through him. It can't yeah. be on your own. That's right. That's right. Uh, speaking of uh, people building, uh, building on foundations according to the way that they feel. Uh, I want to make our uh, viewers and listeners aware Uh of uh, an article I just published. This is, this is weird. (laughs) I got to move everything out of the way here. Uh, So this is on legislationnation.blog. This is my ethics website. Um, And the article is titled Unsex Me Here. And it's about the sexual revolution and the history of the sexual revolution. Um, Basically, people building on the foundation uh, with their feelings and their own preferences um, and how the sexual revolution is actually leading to inequality in our day and the greatest degree of sexism I have ever seen. So I encourage our viewers and listeners to go check this out. This is uh, legislationnation.blog and uh, read the article titled Unsex Me Here. Um, Anyway, yeah, I just thought uh, shameless plug. (laughs) <laughs> so, you know. I think that's pretty fitting. I'm looking forward to reading a bunch of those too. It's a it's an important important area to to focus right now. Yeah, I mean, I guess at all oh, times, but man. especially today. Yeah, yeah, especially today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading your stuff, Agent Duffy. <laughs> and I'm gonna sit there and have a a very nice, delicious cigar. And I'm going to send you a picture of me having that cigar because you sent me a picture of you having coffee. So I'm going to be reading all your good yeah. stuff and his good stuff. Legislation Nation, you said? Mm-hmm. Legislation Nation. Legislation dot blog. Yep. Dot blog. That's it. Who came up with that name, blog? <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, what, does, what does blog mean? What does Let's it trace mean? Is the it an origin. acronym? That's, it could be. It I might be. <laughs> <don't know>. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Foundational being the key uh, thing here. It could, could stand for like bibliographic log. Or something like that. I don't know. That's, I, that's just a guess. I You're no too idea. smart. Yeah, you got me. That's, that hurts, man. That's All right. What, what else y'all got from the sermon? What do you think about just the plain application? Because obviously Paul has particularly in view the, the one who is working hard at preaching and teaching in each local church. Or supposedly working hard at preaching and teaching in every local church. Um, so that's the person directly in view here. So the application directly applies to the preachers or teachers of the local church. What do you guys think about the application I made to everyone else? Who, everyone else, uh, people who have trades other than preaching the gospel. See, let me tell you something straight up, Pastor. That's where I broke. I, I can't, I can't. I've been doing this yeah. for a minute or two, so I couldn't think of the other applications. Pastor, I just thought of, I really, really wish how many people knew that they are actually pastors themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh and our, our responsibilities. That's what stuck out and nailed me yeah. is the responsibilities mm-hmm. of those teaching and preaching. Yeah. Well, let's, let's bring that out a little bit. Um, this doctrine priesthood of the believer, 
Uh, what does that mean and how does that work out for every Christian's faith who isn't standing at, on, at a podium on Sunday morning and, and preaching? <laughs> you know? How does priesthood of the believer work out for, for Joe Christian? Or Jim Christian, <laughs> or, or, or Sally Christian. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, don't be, don't be wrong. Now you gotta mention Sally or whoever. Uh, you know what? It, it, this could go down a bad rabbit trail. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're yeah. gonna cross into non distinction real quick, and that's unhealthy. <laughs> what was your question again? <laughs> I'm already befuddled. Uh, how does the priesthood of the believer? How does uh -huh. that work out for Joe or Sally Christian? <laughs> Oh, I got a good answer for that one. Go for it. I think, who was it? Joe Christian? Whatever. Joe Christian, Sally Christian, Susan Christian, Super Sister Christian. Super Sister, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Super Sister. It's like people don't understand uh, you're standing in front of the podium for an hour tops. When you leave the church, every single one of these members is standing in front of a podium when they're at the dollar store, when they're at Walmart, when they're driving down the road. They're preaching and teaching. They're showing by example. That's just yeah. where I go. Uh, husbands My, and fathers are the yeah. pastors of their homes. Uh, teachers technically are the pastors of their students. Um, governors and presidents are the pastors of their people. Um, there's, there's a lot of, now I wouldn't draw that out like, like to the extreme to say they have to be perfect or have to qualify like the elder of a church. Uh, I think the qualifications for elders of God's church are, way more severe than the qualifications someone has to be president or governor or something like that. But it's something we should all be striving for, right? Uh, we are all priests in God's nation. We represent God's redemptive work to all of humanity as we live. And that's the responsibility of every Christian, not just the pastor. If you have a relationship with our Savior, our Lord and Savior, you are a royal, what is it? Royal priesthood? Is that what he says? I thought you were going to say a royal pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. Yeah, no, that's a, royal a royal pain priesthood. is me. Yeah, a royal, royal priesthood, priesthood. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. I mean, seriously, if you're in love with Jesus Christ, you're already there. So many people don't understand that, that they're preaching, teaching, and th their sermons are sometimes louder than the pastor's. Mm. Because when they actually do some negative or bad mm. actions or good actions, yeah. people watch that mm. and... Listen and learn. Hold on. My, uh, my, my first thought doesn't go to our, our position of um, representation or influence over others. My first thought when I hear priesthood of the believers, the, the role that priests would have to be an inter, intercessory between the people and God. Mm. And if I am a, I am a priest, um, now there, there is no other man uh, which needs to serve as a mediator aside from the person of Christ, because I now have direct access to exactly. God through the person exactly. of Jesus. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a huge part of it too. Uh, and, oh, look, pastor, according to the dictionary, a minister in charge of a Christian church or congregation. Uh, true, but not sufficient. <laughs> Holman has a much better version. Of that. Do you have a Holman dictionary in here? Anyway? I'm sure we do somewhere. It's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Priest of the believer. Absolutely. So priest of the believer means I have direct access to God. I represent God's redemptive work to humanity. So fathers for their children, bosses for their employees, uh, employees to their coworkers. Um, if, if you serve as a, in public office, then to all the people you serve, you represent God's redemptive work to them. Every believer has this responsibility to every unbeliever. Like the church is literally here on earth to minister to those who are outside the church. Amen. Um, if, if we're not doing that, uh, we're a cult or a social club, not a church. That's it. Yeah. You know. Enough said there, bro. Yeah. Can I go mm -hmm. home yet? <laughs> <laughs> Coffee time. Hey, Sergeant Duffy, I'm going to hit Sergeant Agent Duffy. I'm going ahead and get me coffee. I don't know where that is. I'm wearing my. You sergeant. can't call that coffee, PA. Oh, that's, what's, what's, what's the word? What's the word? I, I have to be sure to enunciate here because it's, it's important. Chit. Yeah. Yeah. Say it correctly. It's D H I T. Is Golly. Oh, I thought I was loved here. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, K 
can. I just went and got me some brown water. <laughs> there you go. I, I think that's much more fitting. He's so mean to me. Uh, so, um, <laughs> as far as a, and I want to bring this down to the home, particularly, mm. um, a man who is a husband and father, how is he a priest to his family? How is he the pastor of his home? Uh, especially when we read this text, how does he, how does he build his home up with the material of the gospel rather than that other stuff? <laughs> Such an important reality that I think is one of the most neglected aspect of our homes today. But I mean, we, we want the best of our homes and what, what that entails is, is admonishing our, our, our families and leading them in the ways of God. Uh, we do that by getting them into the word, teaching them the word, helping, you know, through conversation, us understand what God is communicating to us, um, you know, instilling in them uh, a life that pursues Jesus and, and, and prioritizes him over all things. The, uh, the, the, the first and, and foremost way we do that, which is one of the areas that if, if I think most of our eyes, we all fail quite a bit is, is by doing that, um, by being examples of what it is to, to pursue Christ. And I, I fail at that all the time. And then I, I use my failure as ways to teach what not to do. So even, even when I'm a bad yeah, representation of what I that. could be, I, I, I use that as a, as a teaching moment for my family and be like, listen, let me show you where I failed to, to honor Christ today and, and why I failed and how we can you know, work at us not, not doing those types of, you know, making those types of mistakes in our own lives. Um, but it's yeah. so critical. It's so critical to to just prioritize the gospel in our homes, to model it to our families, but yeah, also uh, realizing that that we must take responsibility of our families. You know, like which is another area where I'll, I'll be I'll be quick to point. You know, but one of my like one of my kids, you know, failures or something like that. I'm like I'm like I need to take responsibility when when they fall short. Um, it's my job to bring them up in the Lord. It's my job to, to, you know, indoctrinate them properly and to, and to have them have a, a character that, that promotes and, and, and reflects the gospel to the world and where they don't, I, I take ownership of that. And, and I, I, I want to love and cover, you know, their sins with, with grace. And, but I need to take responsibility for their failures and love them through it and teach them through it and, and be the priest that says, Lord, this is my home. You've given me charge over uh, these, these people and I need to love them and serve them well. Um, and like you would even compare a good, uh, I don't know if this would be a good comparison to some people that take uh, uh, Hey, you're, only cut, take only you're cutting in and out a little bit. Can you repeat that last sentence? Good. No, it was just very profound. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> but you know what? I, I, if I don't talk quickly, I don't mean to interrupt, but if I don't talk, I forget stuff because I'm really old, <laughs> like almost 40. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yep. but it's like the one key ingredient though can i i 100 agree with you exactly but something i'd like to highlight is for you to do that can you have to have for any parent any father especially you've got to have humility because mm. it's not easy to walk up to your seven-year-old kid and say i was wrong i messed up but that's the gospel. That's the love. That's the admonishment you were talking about. You know, you may have to correct and, and adjust, but it takes humility. And the only yeah. way that that's going to come through is with the Holy Spirit, as far as my belief. Is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, representing Christ to others isn't about being super pious or perfect. 
No, it's, it's about modeling God's redemption, which means repenting, um, setting the example uh, for repentance in our households and our churches. That's why if I do something wrong, I'm, I try to be quick to repent. It's my responsibility to set that example for the whole congregation uh, and for my household and for everyone I know. It's, it's very important. You know? That's the modeling. Mm -hmm. I believe that to be. You said that, Ken. That was a good word. I was looking for a good word and I didn't have it, but modeling. Mm -hmm. Not exampling, mm -hmm. but modeling. Modeling the, the dichotomy of, of the parent or the family unit along being guided by the Holy Spirit with humility. I mean, yeah. that's if you don't model it, you can say anything you want all day long, as long as you're alive on this earth. But if you don't model it, mm -hmm. you're out there, bro. Yep. That's you, it. You people, you can yeah. talk all you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> see the same. Go ahead. Well, when Paul's talking about uh, like, like, am I, am I breaking up again or am I good? No, no. You <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> give me that look. I mean, I mean, Paul. Paul talks about uh, husbands loving their wives as as Christ loved the church. Same same thing, right there. It's like, but but as if we see that we we as husbands want to love our wives and serve our wives in ways that uh, uh, sanctify see them sanctified by the word. You know, and the only way to be sanctified by the word is to be, you know, ingesting and and thinking through and working through the word. And if and right there, he uses husbands as the ones who are to be sure that our wives are being sanctified by the word, you know, seeing them be transformed and transformed and made beautiful um, as, as she's Bingo. purified by those, those things of God. So you're not an egalitarian then. Oh, <laughs> ah, goodness. <no. laughs> is, oh man. I, 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 I really, and I'm going to be very straightforward here because like, I, I try so hard um, not to be divisive over that issue. And, and I like, I want to be charitable with this difference in, in the church, especially in our day of what, right. feminism. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. no yeah, surprise. The scare, the scare quotes are accurate there. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's no surprise that, that in, in this generation of the, the, you know, the push of feminism that it, the culture has invaded the church, but now it's like, Really, legitimately wrestle over the proper um, the proper way to respond to brothers because to date, and I and this is like me holding back and saying no, you know, Ken, you got to be gracious here, you got to be loving. Like, I, I really cannot comprehend how the church has become so unfaithful in that area. How how people would say that oh. they would love Jesus and then disobey clear area of his his character and his order like like i i, I hear people talk about you know, these people love jesus like these it, it, this might be an area where we divide and disagree but i hear people that i respect talk about you know these women pastors which there is no such thing um but these women pastors that love jesus and i i feel like like i, I believe them like how does that work out i don't know um and i want to err on the side of being gracious and and loving to these people, but my goodness, no, I'm not egalitarian. I could uh, take up yeah. a lot of airtime here. <laughs> no, I'm I'm very much complementarian as well. So, <laughs> you know. mm. um, it is it is interesting. Um, the and I'll put it in square scare quotes too. The the feminist <laughs> movement, right? Which isn't really a feminist movement. Really, mm, it's, no. really, it's debilitating and disgraceful to women, which is yeah. which is terrible. Um. But the whole movement, especially in the church and people becoming women pastors, uh, they say, and if a man did this, it would be just as wrong, right? They say, I deserve this and I am going to fight for this. Mm -hmm. I have a right to do that. As soon as you say that, you disqualify yourself from being a pastor in any regard. Try that with that's, <laughs> yeah, that's um, yeah. Uh, uh, no, pastors no. are are not to be about their own rights at all. If we are about our own rights, we're not good pastors. Period. That's right. That's it. Um, we we live to be a slave to others, and that whole movement is I live for myself, and that not only disqualifies somebody from being a pastor, but it disqualifies somebody from being a Christian. A Christian. Yeah. 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 I. That's just my. Yeah. Which which is insane. Uh, I want to I go back to talking about husbands as pastors of their households. Uh, 
especially for uh, the young the young guys listening to this episode, uh, we as as men of God and men of God within our households, we have a responsibility to. Uh, we've already mentioned this to to bring our families to the redemptive and sacrificial love of Christ to model that for them, there but also go. to yeah. be sure our families are discipled, uh, mm-hmm. which means the the man of the household, if there is a man in the household, the man of the household has a responsibility to take his family to church together and to commit his family to church together. Um, the man of the home has ah. the man of the home has that responsibility before God, um, and if if we are not doing that, that's the most basic thing we can do to lead right. our households uh, into Christ and uh, model Christ's redemptive love for them, and to sacrifice of our own uh, wants or needs um, in order to come before God and humbly repent and set that example. This is why we want our family sitting in church together. It's why we don't want to separate children from the congregation, uh, because we believe parents uh, are the shepherds of their children and their pastors. And yeah. And the first responsibility a parent has as a parent and a, and a man has as a, as a husband and a father is to get his family, not just attending church, but actually plugged into church. Um, and I, I, I feel very strongly about that. It's not because I'm a pastor it's because it's biblical. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I do the same thing with my family. Um, we're raising Elijah as part of the church, not separated out from the church, uh, which is so, 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 so important, but there are too many, and I'll put it in bold terms. Okay. Do it. Uh, there are too many wussified girly men out there Mm. who, who want to, Instead of providing their family with the bread of life, they want to spend all of their time working in order to put food on the table, material food on the table. And they use that as an excuse not to provide the bread of life to their families when the bread of life is way more important than putting food on the table. If we seek after God, he provides everything we need. I can attest right. to that. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, everything we need for life and ministry. A man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Um, the, the, the bread of life is way more important than the bread on the table. Uh, God will provide the bread on the table. Seek the bread of life. And we need men in this nation. Men have forgotten how to be men in this nation. Uh, I risk sounding a little bit like Steve Anderson. I don't want to sound like him at all. Or yeah, but you're men, right. Men have just forgotten. Jump up on your table real quick. Just jump up on the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, like men have forgotten how to be men. He, his words were men in America don't stand up anymore. Talking about to pee against the wall. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was his sermon. The, the worst sermon in America ever preached. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, there is some, there is something to be said about men in America no longer knowing how to be men. Um, we are we are wussified, and we have forgotten how to deny ourselves and take up our crosses and follow Jesus. Um, the church has become um, a- an attraction for women because the church has become uh, weak and effeminate, uh, and we we need uh, we need men to stand up and be men again. Uh, we need that strength in the church. Yeah. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, no okay. kidding. Maybe, maybe I should stop focusing on the, the, the entirety of the church when I have those times where I have critiques myself because you're you're spot on, man. I mean yeah. I, I think I think the, the men um, were the beginning of the, the the many failures that we see in our culture today because um, we have given up our responsibilities in the church and failed to lead properly. And that's, that's probably a better starting point, like as well within context of our conversation, this passage too, is we have failed. And, and, and I guess the question is like, how do we, I mean, not me individually necessarily, but should I take ownership and, and how do we pick up this mantle and be like, yeah, you know what? Um, we need to we need to fix this this problem in this this country specifically with the church, and it needs to start with us. Yeah, for sure. And this this episode is sounding a little masculine, which is okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give a little teaser for something upcoming from the church at Sunsites. 
uh, Ken, your wife, Kathy, and my wife, Katie, Uh-oh. plan on doing a podcast Uh-oh. for Uh-oh. women. Oh, that's going to no, be, no, no. <laughs> that's going to be legit. So yes. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. It's going to be cool. Uh, and they're going to talk about secret women stuff and maybe, maybe we'll be offended and that'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think what 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 we were talking about a little bit, Ken. I, I can't help but equate that to it's like I think so many people believe that there's strength in strength, but there's more strength in humility mm-hmm. than yeah. there is in mm-hmm. strength. Does that makes sense. Yeah. It does in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know men who they'll they'll hear something from the pulpit, or they'll disagree with a pastor about something mm-hmm. and they'll be so self caught up um, more concerned about their own feelings that they're like, oh, I'm just going to stay home. Um, that is not manly. <laughs> that is not, that is not strength being exhibited. Um, that is uh, running away, um, failing to reason with others, failing to discern the truth. Uh, failing to deny self. Uh, there's nothing manly about that kind of attitude. That's that's running away. That's, completely void of hum- humility. Yeah. Completely void. Yeah. Um, and it. Re- I mean, it really. Um, one of one of the most difficult things to do is deny self. Uh, go oh, to, go to war for your dude. family and your nation. Sacrifice yourself. Uh, oh. We need we need strong men um, more severely today than. Then within, you know, maybe any time within the last twenty years, it's it's time for men to to stand back up on their feet and uh, and learn mm-hmm. how to be men again. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I happen to work with a gentleman who's been a green beret most of his life, and it's like all, we've had that we've had that talk. It's like you know, the, the, what did you say? Wussified. That's a wussified <laughs> nations. And he's like, oh, you know. <laughs> But it's seriously, though, it's like all these men out here that it's like Boy Scouts. I don't even want to start on that. But when I was running the boys, helping with the Boy Scouts in Georgia, there was not a single man leader. They were all women teaching in the Boy Scouts because the guys were all and I've heard this. I got to make money or they're not going to eat. The prioritization is is completely out of whack. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Uh, before we run out of time here, uh, I want to. I want to make some clarification on a couple things. Um, since this episode did get real masculine, I didn't expect it to. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, to be complementarian uh, doesn't mean that uh, men and women are unequal. Uh, doesn't mean that we have unequal value. Uh, it means that God created men and women uh, to complement each other, and, and He created men with a certain uh, physique, with a certain physiology, with certain brain functions, with certain tendencies on for, purpose for his purposes. He's very intentional about that. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so God created men the way men are for his purpose. And God created women the way women are for his purpose. And in the garden of Eden, we see that the woman is a helpmate to the man and the man is the, the sacrifice on behalf of his wife. Right. And so what men need uh, from women and people don't talk about this. This is taboo in today's culture, right. today's society. Mm-hmm. What men need from women is respect, right? Um, and what women need from men is love, compassion, compassion. Yeah, the 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 touch, you know. Um, and we complement each other in that way. Um, and God has reserved certain roles for men, and He has reserved certain roles for women. That doesn't mean there's no overlap. Um, like, like a man can't do the dishes at home. No, please. Oh, you, I hate that. Man, if you love your wife, do the dishes. <laughs> I like, hate that. Yeah. I hate, I've <laughs> seen, you know, I've seen yeah. men that refuse to wash dishes. Uh, no. So this refuse. is, yeah. I'm so like, this, this jerk. is not some, some doctrine that elevates the doctrine of either sex right. or either gender. Um, it, it is to say that men, uh, God has given us a certain capacity to do difficult things that women do not have. And I am calling you to that. Right. Yeah. And, and it's always, and I always point to the fact that Jesus is the model of that submission. So, so when Paul call, calls women to submit to their husbands, 
um, Jesus submitted to the father and there was absolutely no inferiority there. There was no difference in value or role. Jesus is God. (laughs) And, and, and he might like that, that model of submission is what we're to replicate to, to show him to this world. And when we, when we have, you know, whether it's in the home, women taking charge in the home or, or in the churches, women wanting to be preachers, like you are breaking what God has chosen to, to model himself to the, 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 the world. Yeah. Uh, so you, you actually mean you're actually bold enough to claim you actually mean that God created men and women together in his image to be his image to the earth. And that through the marriage relationship, people actually learn something about who God is and his nature and in his relationship to himself. You mean to <laughs> actually heard that somewhere. <laughs> That's strange right? beliefs and behaviors. Yeah, not and that, and as simple as it is, like that's like railed against today. It's about yeah. to be outlawed. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I tell you what, who that's knows? Why it's being attacked, be just like everything else. This is this is not this is not just um, um what do you call it? Like progressivism and and kind of growing to a, a better you know a, a humanity or evolution. Like this is and always has been an attack against God. Every, everything that we see, that's why when Paul says we're not warring against flesh and blood, like, right, 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 right. We see these things like we get, we, we're too quick to just think like it's insignificant. Um, all this stuff is just a war against God, whether it's covering your, you know, Imago day or distorting it through the home and the church. Like, like it's all war. It's all war against God and his image because people in their nature hate God. And the only way to attack God is to, to attack, attack his image bearers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, Christ's kingdom wins in the end. So. Hoo-ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Christ's right, kingdom yeah. wins today. Uh, amen. <laughs> oh, he, he one up you, you're, man. Your you're eschatology is showing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pouring out of me, and, and you revealed my eschatology as well with that statement. Thank you. I can see. This. <laughs> no, it's it, yeah, it's it's good. Um, it's no surprise that when we get to First Corinthians chapter seven, is that what's next? Paul, no, <laughs> it'll, it'll take us a little bit to get to chapter seven. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. Paul, Paul talks about the marriage and the role of women in the church, I and mean, that's no accident, like that's what he's working up toward. Uh, we didn't. I mean, it's it's a logical outcome of the passage we we looked at on on Sunday morning, like mm. talking oh, about sexual man. and gender distinctions. It's, it's the natural the natural outpouring of that passage, and Paul gets there in First Corinthians too. No, nope, I won't be allowed <laughs> to say anything. No, no, I won't be like y'all. Both y'all being quiet, PA, be quiet, be. I mean, I I just I'm I'm big on that. I'm I'm. I'm one of those guys where if, if you come up and tell me that, yeah, no, my wife does all the cooking and all the cleaning and everything, I'm like, well, you're a turd. <laughs> <laughs> Help your wife, bro. Yeah, do the vacuuming, do the dishes, yeah, do the laundry. Help not, her out, man. We're <laughs> servants. We're not, yeah, we're not talking about a dominance. Yeah. Uh, no. Right? To be a man is literally to put yourself on the chopping block for your wife. Uh, underneath her. Yeah. Dominance <laughs> is a part of the fall. Yeah, that's it. So Do what now? That, that distortion again when when sin oh. entered. I said dominance is a part of the fall. That when when sin entered, um, what would otherwise be like perfect roles um, got broken, and and now men's desire is to rule over their wives, and that's nature. That's why you see so many broken marriages, even even like Christian marriages. The the, the difficulty is the the desire through sin. Is, is for us to rule over them rather than to right. work with them in different ways yes, yeah. uh, with different roles. Yeah, and you see that that prominent and, and, and speaking into that reality and, and marriages is what quickly brings understanding and oftentimes healing when people realize um, like this isn't bad what I want to be. It's just broken how I'm doing it. Right, and, and that's Ooh, usually yeah. some quick adjustments that can can fix a lot of problems in marriages, both ways, both ways, because uh, women that's likewise why. don't want to submit to their husbands too. 
Right. Yeah, which is why biblical premarital counseling is absolutely necessary for anybody, <laughs> yeah. anybody, anybody wanting to get married. Um, premarital counseling doesn't mean you currently experience problems. It means right. it's, it's precautionary work. It's, yeah, it's in order to keep you from having problems in your marriage. Um, that's what I'm, premarital counseling is. So that you have a marriage have that glorifies God and is good for both the man and the woman. Yeah. And he's so right. I actually had did some counseling a while back and I asked a couple before they got married, so are you going to do some counseling? Like we don't have any problems. So, I mean, just the mm. viewpoint of that, they, it's, yep. it's, they think if you go to counseling, you you got problems. Mm. No, you go to counseling to prevent the it's, problem. It's preventative care. Just yeah. like you go for your annual checkup at the doctor. You know, yep. go oh, we talk, we stop talking about doctors. Now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, guess what? Church on Sunday morning does the same thing. Huh? Preventative care. That's exactly on, right. You go, and then you know, you don't go to church. What happens? Well, you fall into sin. That's, <laughs> that's I get grumpy. natural outcome. It's, I get grumpy. That's it. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, preventative care. We are to live life proactively, not reactively. Uh, that is mm-hmm. the Christian way. No oh, sure. man, I've been chewed out before for that. Mm-hmm. Don't too. react. No. Act. Uh, yeah. I learned that a long mm-hmm. time ago. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. No. All right. Like you guys have anything else before we uh close up close up shop? Well, I, close I, up I, I think the big question will be is will this podcast be burnt up in fire or will it withstand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting getting right at chapter three, verse Eat fifteen trees. there. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I often wonder if uh, the books I have on my bookshelf will still be on the bookshelf on the other side, uh, or the books that I've written oh, will still will still be yeah. will still be in existence on the other side in the resurrection. And well, the answer is simple: uh, the books may still be there, but the ideas represented will be revealed for what they are. Um, it's yeah. you know, it's uh, I don't think God is is I don't think God's culture is cancel culture, but. Since we'll all know the truth, we'll read a book and say, nah, that's dumb. Yeah. I think that's all uh, I guess. Yeah, that's that's another subject. That's uh, will what we enjoy on the earth today, will it still be there? I think yes, but it would take me too long to explain it to uh to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we should do uh, that. We, we, we and Kathy were we're actually on one of our walks or ones, I think it was a run. I don't remember, but regardless, we talked about like the whole time we were talking about like how, yes, we always quickly jumped to how unfathomable like this is going to be, but I want to like try to like work through some of these things. How, how will it be like the relationships and where we live? Do we go to bed at night? Like just, I know we can't know with any type of certainty, about those specifics, but it's interesting to think through them and, and talk about. Uh, I recommend. Yeah, I, I don't. Fun. I don't necessarily agree with uh, Randy Alcorn um, eschatologically, but his book on heaven is very good. So I mm. recommend. Yeah, recommend it for okay. sure. Yeah. All right. This has been Black Top Pulpit by the Church at Sunsides. Please visit the Church at Sunsides uh, Check out all of the resources we have there for you and you and you him. up there. Uh, <laughs> drinking real coffee, drinking real coffee. So wrong for that. Uh, all of our bible studies are there uh, questions <laughs> answered <laughs> and be sure to pray for the ministry that we get to do we invite you to come be a part of our church uh, men of god we invite you to come be a part of what yeah, we're man. doing here uh, please hit that donate button so we can continue doing the work that we do in our community and elsewhere um, all donations made with the notation Blacktop Pulpit. Uh, those go directly to our Deacon's Benevolence Fund. There we go. I think that's I'm it. digging that. Right. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>